So for this video we're going to be taking a look at some of the tools I use. Um, it's been a while since I did a video and I figured uh, be no harm to kind of show other noobs like myself or even some of you more experienced guys some of the tools I use. Um, if you have any suggestions for tools I could do with or kind of uh, tricks or tips when it comes to different tools uh, please let me know down in the comments. Uh, before we get cracking, um, before I start showing you all my tools and that, um, I'd like to thank Gadget UK. Uh, since this shout out in the previous video, I've gained over a hub a hundred subscribers, and I had planned to do like a video for when I hit a hundred subscribers and kind of thank everyone. Um, so look forward to something like that in the near future. So again, big thanks to Gadget UK, and uh, let's get cracking. Let's uh, have a look at some of the tools that I use. So here's the kind of main nuts and bolts tool of everyday kind of tinkering um, my soldering iron. Um, it's an RS Pro brand. Um, a lot of my tools are RS Pro because I live in quite a remote area and they do home delivery next day if it's uh, Irish stock, um, two days if it's uh, UK stock. So you can see it's a, that's the model number, 124-4132. Relatively inexpensive iron. There's a nice little uh, dial for temperature control. Um, and you can kind of store different settings uh, with this. It has an auto power off timer, so like it goes off after half an hour, you can adjust the time. Half an hour generally does it, like if it's sitting idle, and just touch that and it wakes up again. Um, really nice iron. Um, the actual uh, soldering pencil or soldering iron it comes with is really good. I just have a standard conical tip on it there, but I do have tons of tips like uh, chisel tips and like these weird kind of 45 degree tips for um, for uh, drag soldering and stuff like that. They're fine. Um, yeah, I it originally just came with uh, this stand, um, which had just the sponge and a place for the uh, for the soldering iron. Um, but I store my little. Uh, wire kind of uh, brush cleaner these are really cheap um, but what I wanted to talk about with these is um, I would always use one of these um, can't remember who but someone explained to me that by using you know and you're meant to use distilled water there not regular tap water because um, the minerals are in tap water will uh, end up eating into your soldering bit um, whereas that is looking you know that looks pretty good for, you know, the age of it. Um, yeah, that aside. If you use the wire brush, you're going to get a better clean. And you're protecting the head, the soldering bit. Uh, whereas with this, the shock of going into cold water can have an effect on the, on the soldering tip. So stick with this kind of wire brass wool or whatever. Um, you'll find these everywhere, fairly cheap. Um, but if you're a regular soldier, don't bother with that um, sponge. It's not a great idea. Um, yeah, um, these take the same kind of bits as a lot of other Weller and Hacko stuff. So that's one of the reasons as well I went for it. That and I like the dial. I like to have a dial. I know some of the uh, Weller stations have the dial. But yeah, so that's the soldering iron I use. So here's my uh, desoldering station, the venerable ZD915. Um, a lot of people um, probably use this station. This one's called NSD. NSD? I don't know. It uh, doesn't matter about the name. You should be able to find them on Amazon, eBay, AliExpress. Try and get one for as close to 100 bucks as you can. Um, mine came, it actually needed a bit of work. I had to resolder one of the wires here. <laughs> it was really badly soldered, so yeah watch out they're not the best made thing in the world but you know for a hundred bucks they do the job um this is the gun um i kind of have a medium enough tip on it um you may notice in the chamber there uh, which i try and keep as clean as i can after using it, i clean it every time um but there's a coin in the middle and that catches some of the solder um i don't let the solder build up at the back now some people online claim that you know these filters for e-cigarettes that are around the same size can be used there like a wire gauze which is better but the coin works out for me because there's still a gap around it um, so the air can pass by it um, and it just means you collect more of the solder here rather than back at the filter at the end 
Um, another trick I have when it comes to the spring, the coin, and just kind of the metal components inside there, not the glass or the rubber, is this stuff. Um, I've mentioned it before in another video, but it's uh, Birchwood Casey uh, Molly Lube. So this is dry film lubricant for firearms and air guns. So basically you clean your barrel uh, and you spray a bit of this and swab it around the barrel. It basically means that, you know, particulates aren't going to adhere to the uh, barrel of the gun. Now, I'm not a gun enthusiast. I have no interest in firearms. But I figured if it could do that for uh, guns, then, you know, hot solder is probably not going to adhere to it so it makes it a little bit easier to clean the stuff just falls off you don't have to go picking or hacking at it um, and you don't have to apply it every time you clean it just you know every so often give the spray uh, give the spring and the coin or gauze and the little metal piece at the back a spray and it does the job um, of course being uh, so widely used you can get loads of filters um, they don't come in this this is just a little thing I had um, to keep my filters in, I have replacement parts should I ever need them, like a little spring here and the little rubber thing in the chamber, um, and some spare bits. And I have another bag of bits somewhere else as well, the kind of nozzles, um, different diameter nozzles. So, yeah, that's the desoldering station. Cheap, you know, I think I paid around 100 bucks for it uh, from a seller on eBay from China. Um, but yeah, definitely worth getting a desoldering um, station. So here's the hot air station I use, it's an 858D, uh, and whatever that says, again, much like the desoldering station, don't worry about the brand name, you'll find these online uh, with various kind of uh, brandings, but they're all a clone of this 858D. Uh, came with three nozzles, kind of, I have the medium one on at the moment, just for whatever I was doing. Granted, I haven't given this a whole lot of work. One thing I will, uh, like a whole lot of use rather, one thing I will say is uh, when you get this, test for continuity between the tip and ground uh, or earth, dirt <laughs> on the plug because um, some of them aren't, uh, aren't earthed properly. Um, so open it up and have a good look at it. There are videos out there, I might pop a link in the description uh, to some videos that kind of talk about how to kind of modify these to make them a little bit safer and um, they're probably fine the way they come out of the box I got this for like I think it was 50 euro less than 50 euro you'll find them on eBay Amazon for for around that and um, you're not gonna be paying a whole lot for them but definitely that's a uh, worth having and I mean if it if it if it goes banjax, I can just I don't mind dropping another fifty quid for one. But for the amount of hot air I use, um, you know, it's it's fine. Um, another thing uh, some people do is uh, open up this side. Um, you may notice that there's vents on one side but not the other. Um, I didn't bother. Um, it's probably fine the way it is. One thing I did do was just ensure that it was earthed all the way through. Uh, but yeah, that's the hot air station. Um, I always use plenty of flux when I'm using hot air, and um, it seems to get components up quicker. So definitely worth checking one of those out. Um, handy too. Um, just while we're on the subject of hot air and kind of SMD removal, um, I have some of this stuff. It's a chip quick uh, um, SMD removal kit. Uh, it's a kind of low temperature, uh, low melting point. Uh, uh, solder that you can apply to existing solder when lifting off chips so if you don't have a hot air station you can kind of apply this with a soldering iron and by kind of dragging around the pins several times uh, you will be able to get stuff off I used this when I was modding my Sega Saturn the BIOS chip and it worked really well um, and indeed if it's a particularly large package you can use both the SMD removal solder and the hot air uh, and you get some really great results when you're removing like really large devices um, so that's a tip it's always worth having a, some of this around it's not the cheapest stuff in the world but I like to keep a bit around and use it sparingly uh, some people say you can recycle the solder I've never done that myself doesn't sound like a bad idea though so, kind of test and measurement gear. Okay, the, well, the first kind of one is your multimeter. Um, it's always worth ha having one decent multimeter. You can always get a second from like Lidl or Aldi or some kind of cheap multimeter as a second one, but it's well worth having a decent one. I went with Amprobe, um, 
just because the fluke ones are really exp expensive. And this is an Amprobe AM520 Euro, so you'll get a different version for the US and that. Um, Amprobe are actually owned by Fluke, so they're like a, a separate brand, um, but they're owned by Fluke. And the reason I got this one, it has um, it has a light that I never really use, but it also does temperature readings, um, which is quite handy. It came with a thermocouple for that. Um, it has a backlight as well if you're in a dark place. Um, and it's just, you know, fully featured, uh, easy to use multimeter um, with a lot of features. It has non-voltage, uh, uh, non-contact voltage detection, um, which can be handy sometimes. Um, but I generally don't use that feature. That's more for electricians and things like that. And they probably would insist that you have a separate device for non-contact voltage detection, um, like a fluke one or something like that. And this is kind of the order you should kind of think about uh, purchasing these tools. Don't get them all at once. Kind of purchase tools as you need them. So multimeter, preferably two of them is a good idea. One decent one, the other one doesn't have to be that great. Um, and then, very important, is the logic probe. So this is a cheap eBay logic probe uh, from K&H Products. Um, yeah, these are great. Um, and definitely, once you start going around kind of testing ICs, this should be your next in line. These are cheap, you'll get them for like 20, 30 euro. You can get expensive ones from Hewlett Packard and things like that. Um, you don't really need an expensive one. This will do the job. And then, of course, once you've graduated from the School of Logic Probe, eventually you've got to get on to your oscilloscope. So this is my Rigel. I did a video on this. I'll leave a link to it in the description. This is the DS1054Z. Um, four channel. Um, I think this is to, is it 100 megahertz? Yeah, I have it unlocked from 50 megahertz to 100. Um, yeah, um, I'm not going to go into it here, but definitely a good oscilloscope. Not cheap, but this is a tool you're going to have all your life. Um, um, you won't be replacing this. You'll be looking after it and kind of using it um, for a long time. Um, quite daunting when you first kind of look at all the buttons and knobs, but you know what? It's actually not that hard to use. Granted, I'm not a pro. I'm still a hobbyist and I'm still learning, but you know, I'm actually getting on okay with this and um, I'm getting some use out of it. I'm not using it as often as maybe some people are, but when you need an oscilloscope, nothing else will do. You kind of, when you need one, you need one. Um, and you're better off um, kind of uh, taking your time, getting, you know, as you learn more about electronics and, and that, um, you'll get more and more use out of this. Um, and you can have some fun with them too, looking at signals from control pads and kind of, you know, it's a tool for learning as well as troubleshooting. Um, so they're kind of the test equipment uh, things. Again, you know, start with your multimeter, move on to your logic probe, and then on to an oscilloscope. Um, I, I was kind of in the hobby for maybe three years before I found a need for an oscilloscope. I was fine with the multimeter for a long time, and then upgraded to the, to the humble uh, logic probe. So, um, some other tools that are quite handy to have is magnification. So I have a head loop here with a little... Uh, light on it, which is quite handy and um, some different lenses that I use um, Some of them are useful some of them aren't and um, you kind of got to ever guess everyone's eyesight is different So you got to kind of test it out uh, You know if your head is hitting the board you've got the wrong lens on basically uh, But yeah, you're definitely going to need this for uh, surface mount stuff for like cleaning vias for trace repair things like that It's invaluable um, yeah, that's why I don't record a lot of stuff with uh, trace repair because I'm usually wearing some kind of magnification like the head loop. Um, there's other solutions, more expensive solutions, but this is kind of, this will do the job for a hobbyist. Um, another quick thing, um, flux. So a lot of you guys know the chip quick stuff. Uh, this actually came with uh, the SMD removal kit from uh, chip quick. So it's SMD291. Um, I don't buy these, I buy the same stuff, but in a syringe. Um, so yeah, this is just a cap that comes off, you get your little metal kind of syringe head. It's It makes applying it to the area, the site you're working on, a little easier. And you can kind of uh, apply as much or as little as you need. I tend to use a lot of it, but um, yeah, that's the flux I prefer. 
Um, it's the same flux, just comes in a nice big syringe. Um, I think it works out a bit cheaper as well to buy it in larger quantities. So, you know, I've had this quite a while. I'll probably buy another one, I guess, the next time I, um, I'm ordering stuff. Um, yeah, so that's pretty good. No clean uh, tack flux. I do have one of these. I don't like it. It's the liquid flux in the pen. Um, Loctite. Um, it's alright, I guess, but you know what? I just It smokes. The fumes off it are quite toxic. Not that the fumes off this stuff are any better, but I just... Yeah, no, I don't like this stuff. I have it. I rarely use it. Um, but yeah. Um, it doesn't leave as much of a mess as the gel flux, but you know what? I just don't like it. It's not as good, in my opinion. So now that we've talked about flux, it probably helps to talk a little about solder. What solder I use. Uh, so it's Loctite brand uh, by Hinkle, um, which is also the same as uh, Multicore. So if you order Multicore, sometimes you get Loctite. They're the same brand. They're the same thing. It's just a different label. Um, so yeah, this is 0.38 millimeter stuff. Uh, leaded solder. Uh, I don't use lead free. Um, kind of a misconception in Europe is that... Um, leaded solder is illegal it, it's illegal in commercial products it's fine for hobbyists you can order it it's no big deal um it does contain lead so wash your hands <laughs> you know but um yeah it's fine um i use the 0 0.38 millimeter because often you're working on really small things it's good to have um a really kind of um low gauge uh, small solder I, I generally you know if you're working on bigger stuff um flowing bigger uh, you know like i don't know like into ground planes with with connectors or, or kind of db9 connectors anchor points things like that larger solder can help but you know what for 99 percent of the stuff i do the 0 0.38 millimeter does the trick so i quickly wanted to cover some hand tools we won't uh we won't be very long at this but basically here we go with the first kind of one that's definitely worth getting uh, you're noticing a trend RS Pro uh, snipe nose pliers uh, needle nose pliers very handy because hot things are hot uh, so when you're desoldering or you need to get under something these can be quite handy um, and in the same vein of thought um, tweezers um, it's surprising how many of these I actually use you can get these in cheap kits uh, like this on eBay and um, definitely worth getting um, some of these ones are quite sharp so be careful but like yeah yeah these are really handy to have um, moving on um, here we have uh, for crimping um, crimping is a subject all unto itself and it's very hard actually to find good information out there about crimping um, but uh, what's the name of this one it's uh, what did I find it's written on it somewhere um, yeah, this is basically called engineers crimpers or engineers pliers, um, but the number is, let me see, put it down properly, so it's a PA09 connector pliers, uh, engineers connector pliers I think it's called. Um, I've bought other crimping pliers and they're really crap for dealing with kind of mod wires and bodge wires and, and when you're making your own uh, connection. But yeah, this is the one I went for after kind of trying a few different ones out. I still have use for the other ones, not as much though. Um, these are kind of uh, your one-stop shop for that. Again, crimping and uh, wire crimping is a subject all unto itself. Um, and something you kind of have to research. Uh, wire strippers. I just have one of these cheap. Um, I think I got this from DigiKey. Um, yeah, Data Shark. And it does kind of the smaller gauge stuff from 22 gauge up to 30, which is, suits me. Um, these are really handy. I know there's other kind of wire strippers out there that are probably a bit more versatile than this. But for what I do, this does the job. I don't tend to not do big stuff. Um, a scribe. Uh, so this is made from tool steel. It's meant for like scribing your initials or kind of scribing into like copper or stuff like that. But this is great for... Um, you know, poking around, removing um, removing corrosion and stuff like that from uh, PCBs when you're doing repairs and just kind of for poking about in general. Then, finally, flush cutters. So these are my sharp ones. These uh, Exolite ones are um, 
my old ones I don't throw them out so if I'm cutting battery terminals or if I'm doing heavy cutting I use the old ones and keep the nice sharp set for like cutting component leads and stuff like that um, the brands I mean they don't really matter do you know Duratool, Exolite you can't go too far wrong again um, these I got off RS Online these I got off DigiKey I don't buy that much off DigiKey um, usually components I don't really bother with tools because you have to pay the uh, the import duty on them so quickly some other things that I think uh, are probably worth picking up uh, Captain tape, always very useful. Um, I have two colours. Uh, it's polyminoid tape. Polyminoid, I believe it's uh, pronounced. Yeah, but um, I have two different colours. Don't ask me why. Um, uh, then, um, well, I'll get on to that. But a uh, fibreglass pen. Um, you usually get these in a set where you get like a, a brass kind of uh, pen and a stainless steel um, pen. But they're great for... Uh, um, exposing traces, cleaning up, um, getting rid of corrosion, cleaning pins, things like that. Um, clear nail varnish, always great for uh, kind of sealing up sites after you've done some rework, uh, if you've done trace repair, stuff like that. Doesn't matter the brand, um, it, it'll it set fairly quick. Um, chip extractors, so we have the dip one there for smaller dips and the PLCC. Um, uh, you'll do a lot of damage to PLCC chips and the sockets if you're not using the right tool. So, well worth having one of them. Uh, they're really cheap as well. Uh, I mean, they break all the time, but you can get them like a dime a dozen. Um, heat shrink, always a great idea. Uh, get in the habit of using this. Don't use electrical tape. Electrical tape is just turns slimy when it gets old. and This stuff is more than... Uh, it has more functions than just replacing electrical tape. It's really worth having. I just buy it in these little kits because you know I, I, it's hard to order uh, it on the reel if you're if you're really a hobbyist. Like there's a whole lingo behind that up there with crimping. Um, it's it's a whole section in itself. Anyways, moving quickly along. Another thing: calipers, cheap electronic calipers. Well worth getting. I keep the elastic band on it so they don't uh, come apart in my toolbox and start using battery. Always handy to have that for measuring. Moving on then, contact cleaner. Um, yeah, great for ports um, and stuff like that. I kind of use it sparingly. I use IPA, isopropyl alcohol, 99% or as close to it as you can get. This is roughly 90% stuff. Um, always worth keeping a few bottles of that around. Um, and clearly marked so that you know that it's dangerous stuff. Yeah, uh, contact cleaner. Um, um, that's the stuff I use. WD-40 uh, Specialist Fast Drying Contact Cleaner. Contains a lubricant that kind of... Um, so in cartridge ports, in, in PCIe slots, stuff like that. Really does a great job. Well worth keeping this around. Use it sparingly. It's not cheap stuff. So I think that's all the tools. And just before I sign off, I'd like to talk a little about some of the projects that are coming up in the near future. Um, we still have a PS2 Modbo um, mod chip installation coming up that I've been putting off for forever now. Uh, we also have a VA7 uh, Mega Drive project. That's the Model 1 with the very kind of similar chipset to the uh, Mega Drive 2. So we're going to be doing some mod work on that. Um, my Mac Will uh, LCD Game Gear is playing up. Uh, one of the color channels uh, is dropping out and it's kind of hanging randomly. So we're going to take a look at that. Um, we're also going to be revisiting the dreaded PC3086. That's the Amstrad XT clone and um, the PC3086, which I was having some trouble with. Um, in the process of trying to refurbish it, I did some damage to it and... Uh, damage some chips so we're going to be doing some troubleshooting with that so that along with some other content coming up uh, in the near future but there's plenty of projects that I have uh, to get cracking on in the new year greetings to all my new subs and to all my old subs thanks for sticking with me and thanks again to get UK for the shout out chat to you all again soon